Hi there. Um, for the next video in these kind of series of videos on various aspects of piano technique, I'm going to focus on something that's actually been requested in one of the comments to one of the videos that I've already made. And that is some hints on um, the skills of sight reading. Um, sight reading obviously being when you um, are playing a piece of music that you haven't seen before. And so you haven't had the chance to practice it and look at the notes in detail. You're expected to just give a reasonable performance of how the piece might go. Um, I often think in some ways sight reading is quite similar um, to learning to read um, when we start to learn to read at school and things. So initially you start off perhaps learning the very short words and then gradually hopefully you begin to see patterns. So rather than actually looking at the word the for example and looking at each of the three letters you'll see it and immediately recognise the pattern. And then as you become um, better at your reading skills, you'll look at longer words and again you'll recognise the pattern much quicker. Um, I think the same is true um, with learning to sight read. So initially when you start off sight reading, you're probably having to think about almost every note and every detail. But what I try to encourage people to do is as early as possible start to notice patterns. So for example, we may have a section where the notes move up one at a time. And you can see them going up the ladder up the stave, going line, space, line, space. So you can spot that pattern. Instead of having to read every note, you can read the whole pattern and read a sequence together. You might know a section where the notes go up, space, 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 on the alternate spaces on the stave, or line, line, line. And you can get the idea then, the notes go up alternate notes. So hopefully those are some patterns that you can try to spot fairly early on. It's a quite a good idea, perhaps before you begin a piece of sight reading, to go through the piece and look specifically for those types of patterns. As you get onto more advanced sight reading, <clears throat> you may well come across chords, or you have groups of notes to play together. So again, it's another pattern to try to recognise. Initially, you'll probably find you're having to look at every single note, but hopefully after a while you can start to recognise, by seeing the patterns on the notes on the music, you can start to recognise that C major chord. And hopefully you can start to recognise the, the different inversions, the different ways in which you write C, C major chord. So that's going to help you out a lot, because instead of having to read every note, you can read the whole chord and play the chord. Um, Obviously, gradually you'll get onto more complicated chords. Instead of just major and minor chords, we might find we've got diminished chords, um, dominant sevenths, and things like that. Um, other patterns to look out for are things like chromatic scales, things like that as well. All these different patterns, all the scales and the arpeggios that we work on, really are there to help us to be able to um, play pieces, but also perhaps to help us a little bit with our sight reading skills. Having said all that, I think the key thing with sight reading is um, not to worry too much if it's not absolutely accurate. Your idea with sight reading is to try to give an idea of how the piece goes, not necessarily to get every note correct. The key things when we are sight reading is to aim for steady pulse so that rhythmically we're as accurate as possible. There's a steady beat going all the way through the piece. And to get an awareness of the key. So always look at which key we're in, whether it's a major or minor key, and which key it is. Obviously, as you get onto more complicated sight reading, you will find you get more sharps and flats. But always try to get that awareness of the key. And if you get an awareness of the key, if you get a nice steady pulse, then the sight reading will work, even if there are one or two small slips. If we hesitate or stop when we make a mistake, we lose that steady pulse, and then that mistake will really um, spoil the overall performance, if you like. But if we manage to just keep going, even though we've made a mistake, and keep it accurate, it will work. Um, just to demonstrate that, one thing I do with a lot of my beginner pupils is um, I'll play a piece of sight reading. This is a um, little grade 8 piece here, grade 8 sight reading piece, and I'm going to play it the first time. I won't play the whole thing, but I'll play the first time in a very hesitant way. I'll play all the notes accurately, 
Okay, so all the notes will be as they are in the music, but it's going to be very, very hesitant. Here we go. So that's one way of playing it. Everything was accurate, but I was very hesitant. I didn't keep a steady pulse. And I think you'll agree it was quite difficult to listen to that performance and follow what the piece was doing. I'll play the same section. This time, I'm going to keep an absolutely steady pulse all the way through, but I'm going to play deliberately several inaccuracies in the notes. Here we go. Now, I think you'll agree that although there were inaccuracies there, and you could probably spot some of them, because it kept flowing along and it kept the steady pulse, it was a lot easier to follow and made a much, much nicer performance. So when you're doing your sight reading, try your best to keep going. Keep an awareness of the key, your sharps and flats, but try to keep going. It's maybe a good idea to practice with a metronome sometimes when you're sight reading to make yourself keep that steady speed going. And I'm sure if you do that, you'll find the piece will flow along much better. Um, just a couple of final points. First of all, if you've got a piece of music with a lot of sharps and flats, it's often a better idea to remember what isn't sharp or flat rather than what is sharp or flat. So if you're in B major, for example, you can just remember that all the keys are black keys apart from the B and the E. So that will help you. Uh, the second point is don't forget when you're sight reading to be expressive. Um, a lot of people when they're sight reading forget completely about all their expression, all their loud and soft. So they concentrate so much on the notes and the dynamics. Sorry, on the notes and the rhythm. But the dynamics, the expression, are as much part of the performance as anything else. They really will help to bring the performance alive. So when you're sight reading, always look at the dynamics and try to bring them out in your performance so that we end up with an um, interesting and a nice enjoyable performance to listen to. So there's a few ideas on sight reading. Um, do add your comments, I'm sure some of you will have some other ideas which perhaps you can add some comments and um, get some discussion going and um, look forward to chatting to you all soon when I get another video up on here. Thanks.